I think we're going to find out what kind of trained eyes athletic director Jen Cohen has for coaching talent. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Culkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen every day. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube or wherever you're going to download your podcast, this show is always going to be free, and I'm always going to appreciate your support. You can show your appreciation if you are watching on YouTube. Become a subscriber. It's quick. It's easy. It's free. Just click, just click that red subscribe button, and when you see this, the thumbs up, smash it, and don't forget to hit that bell notification. That way, you will not miss one episode. This episode. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com forward slash locked on college. Terms and conditions will apply. If you haven't seen it yet on social media, it's out there. Go check it out. USC's new defensive coordinator, Danton Lynn. He's traded in his baby blues, and he's got his card on goal. Uh, he was seen standing on Howard Jones' practice field. He was actually standing in between wide receivers, Deuce Robinson and Jacoby Lane. Uh, this happened, I guess, over the weekend. Now, he's not going to be coaching in USC's bowl game. Uh, we're going to talk more about that in the next segment. But he is going to start using his trained eyes to start focusing on recruiting. Uh, that that was made um, public, I guess, um, over the weekend as well. <coughs> now, uh, the Washington Husky, they're, uh, they're under their second-year head coach, Kalen DeBoer. They're undefeated, 13-0, and they're heading to the playoffs. This is the second time for that, for that program, uh, for the Huskies. By the way, I'm bringing that up because USC's athletic director, Jen Cohen, hired Kalen DeVore. USC is still trying to get to the playoffs. The Trojans were literally standing at the front door last season. All they had to do was just play a little defense, just a little. And then we know what happened. You know, Caleb Williams, he... Pulled up with an injury. He actually helped USC jump out to a quick 17 point in the first quarter in the conference championship game. And then things kind of fell apart. So now, this is uh, Lincoln Riley. He was after the conference championship game loss and after the loss to Tulane in the Cotton Bowl. <clears throat> he, was, uh, he was allowed to, uh, I guess, make his own coaching evaluation. And he kept Alex Grinch around for another year. So fast forward to 2023. Even when USC was 6-0, and 6-0 and to open the season, and I was still doing my best to kind of see all the positives and say, yeah, you know, this is why they can continue to go undefeated. We all saw, myself included, that there were issues. Here's the thing. Well-coached teams know how to win close games. Athletic director Jen Cohen, I guess now is when she's going to start her own evaluation process with what she inherited. Uh, I, I think last year, um, well, one, she came in after the fact, but, you know, this was her get to know everybody in the program all across the board, not just football, but get to know everybody here. So this year, going forward, is where she's now going to now start really evaluating what did she inherit? Remember, she didn't hire Lincoln Riley. Uh, the early chapters of Lincoln Riley's head coaching career uh, started off with a lot of excitement, right? And it, it it always had the fans wanting more when you got to the end of each chapter. Getting to the playoffs in the postseason, that, that was great. Winning a playoff game or a bowl game would be even better. That's going to be his next step. Right now he's won one bowl game in his career. When Lincoln arrived in L.A., it was kind of deja vu. It started with a lot of excitement. 
and then by the end of you know by the end of the first chapter in Lincoln's time in LA, the fan USC fans they were all locked in. They were wanting more. And chapter two, year two, USC fans were left wanting a lot more. <laughs> Finishing the regular season seven and five. So when when athletic director Cohen arrived in Seattle, you know Chris Peterson, he was already there for a couple of years. They were already on, a, you know, they had a solid solid footing on ground, solid culture. They actually already had a playoff appearance as well. And while she did promote Jimmy Lake after Chris Peterson retired, she also kept bait with him really quickly. For whatever reason, decision was made, boom, it was done quickly. Lincoln Riley just made his second significant coaching decision since he took over at USC. The first one took him longer than it should, getting rid of Alex Grinch. And the hiring of DeAnton Lynn to replace that same guy, uh, some would argue, also took longer than it probably should. So what is the bar to gauge Coach Riley against? Did both Kalen DeBoer and I'm going to throw Oregon's Dan Lanning into the into the equation. Do they come into more stable coaching environments? Probably. But Riley is the one with all of the accolades and all the Heisman winning quarterbacks. So it's going to be interesting. You know, it's going to it's going to be interesting to see if if any of the existing staff that Lincoln Riley hired uh, if they're retained. So even though. Um, Anton Lynn won't be coaching in the upcoming Holiday Bowl. Um, I'm going to assume he's still going to have a voice during some of the practices. I know he's not going to be coaching, um, but I'm sure he'll be out there, you know, kind of looking around. He might say a thing or two here and there. So it's also going to be interesting to see if his scheme starts to get incorporated. Is it going to be used in the bowl game? He likes to run that 4 2 5, four down linemen, two linebackers, nickel back five defensive backs. On my instant reaction show the other day, I mentioned some defensive line coaching uh, possibilities. Elijah Robinson uh, seems to be the name that I guess we call him the uh, defensive line coach du jour. If you're, you know, if you're using social media <laughs> to kind of decipher, decipher things, especially with who, you know, who's following who. So if he is USC's next defensive line coach, you would think that's probably going to give USC a leg up uh, in the Walter Nolan sweepstakes. The Texas A&M defensive lineman uh, said he plans to enter the transfer portal. At least he, that's what he's told on three sports. Six foot five, 300 pounds defensive lineman. He was ranked num the number one recruit in the 2022 recruiting class, and he still has two years of eligibility remaining. Look, I said on a previous episode of Locked on USC that USC needs a, another three more Bear Alexanders. Well, there's one right there. And if Lynn is focused on recruiting these next few weeks, that's probably a good place to start. That's why I brought that up right now. So it's, what it looks like is this could be an expensive offseason um, for USC, both with staff signings. It's it's been reported that uh, Lynn is getting a nice raise, including a uh, nice housing stipend. So you now have his salary, and you know you're going to have to throw some NIL uh, resources around if you want players like Walter Nolan coming along. Is Lincoln Riley going to allow, is he going to let Lynn make all the decisions on the defense? How much is Jim Cohn going to want to be involved? Remember, Chris Peterson said um, one of her greatest strengths was personnel evaluations. He really leaned on her when he had to choose his assistant coaches. So you got to think that Riley's defensive staff 2.0 is also going to be a part of her evaluation process. Will USC end the season on a four-game losing streak? or? Uh, can Riley, can Lincoln Riley, can Coach Riley rally the team to win their bowl game, which would be 
just his second win in six postseason tries. In a recent uh, LA Times article, Jen Cohen, she was interviewed. Um, she gave Coach Riley her vote of confidence when she said, first of all, really disappointing year. We all had big goals and we have high expectations for us here. And that's why we're here. He, Lincoln Riley, loves the pressure of that and the expectation of that. And so do I. So disappointing and frustrating, not just for the coaches and the players, but obviously for our fans and for our former athletes. That's that's not the standard, and that's not where we're going. As far as Lincoln goes, I have full confidence in him. He has my full support. It's been an incredible, it's been incredible getting a chance to work more closely with him, end quote. So, as I said, this was this past year was her get to know me, get to know everybody year. 2024 is full of a lot of pressure. And right before I went to uh, record this episode, uh, I found out that the media uh, is going to be able to talk with Lincoln Riley for the first time in a while. Uh, Monday morning, 9 a.m. on via Zoom. And then on Tuesday, 12 o'clock, I'll be jumping on Zoom and we're going to meet Coach DeAnton Lynn as well. So I'm still waiting on a practice schedule. But there you have it. I wanted to talk about this, kind of broach the subject. The offseason is all about evaluations. Recruiting, well, you kind of just heard it right there at the end. Jen Cohen said it herself, using different words, that um, going forward, things have to be better. And she's got a lot of confidence in Lincoln Riley, but now we're going to find out how Lincoln Riley puts together his next staff version at USC. It's a big offseason. We're going to see how that evaluation process goes along. When you're hiring for your small businesses, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster, and they're going to do it for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals. That's a billion with a B, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. It's so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing a lot of hats and that you might not have the time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. They even launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and even faster. <clears throat> Post your job for free at linkedin.com forward slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com forward slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Locked On has launched the first national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, covering the top, the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. So as you can see here on the rundown, the Trojans are going bowling in San Diego. Yes, heading back to the Holiday Bowl. This time versus Louisville. Seven and five, five and four in conference. The Trojans are heading to San Diego um, for the holidays. They're taking on Louisville, number 15 ranked. They're 10 and three, seven and one. Uh, that's how they finished up in the ACC. And... That game will be played December 27th, if you're checking your calendar, 5 p.m. That's at Petco Park Baseball Stadium. <laughs> and if you're not going to head down there, it'll be on Fox, five, like I said, 5 p.m. First time ever between USC and Louisville. And here's a little thing of note. If you're looking for tickets and you want to sit on USC's side of the field, they are the home team. And that will be on the third base left field side of the field. and those seats are actually closer for the fans than on the other side. So I guess they kind of bring in temporary seating. Go check it out. I think you, this is kind of an intriguing game. Again, smaller stadium, baseball configuration, pick Amtrak, jump on there. You're right there. Now, here's what you need to know. Quick synopsis. 
The Holiday Bowl first started in 1978. USC didn't make their first appearance in the Holiday Bowl until 2014. And this is going to be USC's fourth time since then. They won their first uh, time going down there, but they've lost their previous, their last two, excuse me. Uh, and the last one wasn't pretty either. And not only that, um, USC has actually lost their last three straight bowl games in a row. Not just not just talking about the uh, the Holiday Bowl. Not only that, USC is also riding a, a three game losing streak heading into the Holiday Bowl. Louisville, they've lost two in a row. They lost their final season game to Kentucky, and then the conference championship game uh, just now over the weekend, sixteen to six against Florida State. Here's what you want to know quickly about Louisville. Uh, statistically, they're a balanced team across the entire spectrum. Straight balance. Scoring offense, 45th in the country, 31 points per game, 30.9. Uh, they rushed the ball, 47th in the country, 175 yards per game. And they're 53rd in the country. They, they gained 244 yards per game through the air. Defensively, pretty good. Uh, 21st, they only give up 19.7. We'll call that 20 points per game. Uh, total defense, they're 16th in the country. They only allow 307 yards per game. Rushing offense, uh, 13th, only 101. And passing, they only give up 205 yards per game. Now get it done. <laughs> That's pretty good. Like I said, very balanced. Uh, this is the same Louisville team who, by the way, dominated Notre Dame at home. Yeah, that defense for Louisville forced a bunch of turnovers in the game. USC fans a week later experienced the same thing for Notre Dame when USC got blown out in South Bend. Yeah, you had five turnovers, I believe. Sigh. Uh, so Louisville's quarterback, his name is Jack Plummer. Name might sound familiar to USC fans. I'll get to that in a second. This year, he completed 63.5% of his passes. 3,063 yards, 21 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Although uh, in the conference ACC championship game, Florida State's defense shut him down. 14 for 36, 111 yards plus an interception. With that being said, the last time he faced USC, I told you the name should sound familiar. He was Cal's quarterback last year in 2022. And he had one of his better games of his career. He threw for 406 yards, three touchdowns, and he completed 71% of his passes. I know, if that sounds familiar, it was a theme this year in 2023. Everyone had a career day against USC's defense. Everybody. So USC is going to take on Louisville and Hollywood in the Holiday Bowl. I'm going to go over that more uh, during the week. But the rest of the Pac-12 got their bowl schedule as well. And I wanted, to, I wanted to touch on that in this segment. Some interesting things going on there. I mentioned Washington is going back to the playoffs for the second time in their program's history. Well, they get to take on Texas. You know where that storyline is? It's the start, it's the, uh, they're playing in the Sugar Bowl. It's also going to be the Steve Sarkeesian Bowl. Uh, congratulations to Steve, uh, Coach Steve Sarkeesian, the former USC head coach. He's sober now. He's reached his potential. He has coached at Washington, USC, Texas as head coaches. Texas is going to the playoffs. Can you believe it? We'll talk about that here momentarily. Uh, Oregon, who lost in the conference championship game to Washington. They're heading to the Liberty Bowl, <laughs> to the Liberty Bowl. Uh, that's the Fiesta Bowl. They are playing Liberty in the Fiesta Bowl. Now, why this is so funny, this is even worse than USC having to play Tulane in the Cotton Bowl last season. I mean, talk about a no-win situation. Uh, Liberty. Yeah. Anyways, enjoy the... Uh, the Fiesta Bowl, Oregon fans. That's fine. No win. You beat them, you're, you're expected to. You lose to them, you lost to Liberty. I would actually rather lose to Tulane. 
anyways. Uh, Arizona, guess who they got? They got Oklahoma in the Alamo Bowl. I actually think this is going to be a fun game. You know, I talked about, I was actually hoping USC and Oklahoma would be paired up. But I'm going to watch this one nonetheless. I think this is going to be a fun game. And I wouldn't be surprised if Arizona knocks, uh, knocks the Sooners off. Here's another fun game. <laughs> it's fun if you're a USC fan because you could have been playing here or you could have been going here. UCLA is going to play Boise State in the Los Angeles Bowl, hosted by Gronk. <laughs> Look, why this is funny is not only is UCLA getting a really low-tier bowl, uh, USC also took their defensive coordinator, Dean Finlay. I think Boise is going to win big. You saw what happened to UCLA in their last regular season game when Cal just throttled them. This is what's going to happen in this game. Yeah, I feel it too. Uh, Utah, they're taking on Northwestern in the Las Vegas Bowl. First of all, I'm surprised Northwestern made a bowl game considering what they started the season out going with, going through. And USC fans, you know what it's like playing against Northwestern when they are kind of like everybody is darling. Remember that 1995, what was it, 1996 Rose Bowl game? So we'll see uh, how Utah fares in this game. Cal, they're taking on Texas Tech in the uh, Independence Bowl. Seriously, who cares? Um, honestly, who cares? I, I'm not going to talk about this game. I, I really go Cal. Um, Oregon State, they get Notre Dame in the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. Okay. At least USC isn't going to El Paso. You know, I kind of feel bad for Oregon State. I really do. They lost their head coach, Johnson Smith. He's taken over Michigan State. Oregon State actually should probably be going to the Holiday Bowl, but because the Holiday Bowl would rather have USC. Oregon State is being relegated to El Paso. But they do get a nice marquee name to go up against Notre Dame. So, uh, because I can never root for Notre Dame, go Beavers. I'll tell you what. If I were my, I want to touch on this mo for, for just a moment. I, that was the Pac-12. If I was Mike Norvell, what, Florida State's head coach, I literally, and I'm not joking, I would have given the college football playoff committee the Elon Musk GFY response. Yeah, I'm not kidding. There is no way in hell they should have been jumped by Alabama. No way at all. I want to use stronger language. It's a family show. I can't. Look, I don't care that Florida State's quarterbacks are hurt. They finished the regular season 13-0. and Look, 13-0 and they scheduled tough out of conference as well, which also included a win over Louisiana State, LSU, part of the SEC. If Alabama is going to get credit for beating LSU and losing to Texas, the team that's also in the playoffs, then you also have to take into consideration that the SEC was down this year. I don't know, man. This just feels wrong on so many levels. Bama is going to get credit for beating LSU, losing to Texas, and you're going to reward them and put them into the playoffs because they beat Georgia. That's a joke. Seriously, if I'm Mike Norvell, he should do it. He should pull the Elon Musk card and then say, find me. And then threaten Florida State to fire him. I think they'd have us back. They would never do that. The college football playoff committee, those folks, they should be ashamed of themselves. I have no dog in this fight. Zero. But wrong is wrong. I'm sorry. I mean, literally, you're telling me the entire team, because your quarterback isn't healthy, you're not good enough to be in the playoffs. Their defense is pretty darn good. And who knows how what they can do in the next four weeks of playoff a, a playoff preparation time? Should never do that. 
feel so bad for those young men. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money bet, money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including the point spreads, those awesome player prop bets. Pick the over-unders. They got up, they got that and a whole bunch more. So visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. One of the off-season stories I want everybody to kind of keep an eye on is the quarterback room at USC. I've been talking about this. I've alluded to it. But now Lincoln Riley is kind of playing a little bit of a quarterback transfer Russian roulette. Just He's, he's kind of setting the table. Um, still, we still haven't heard anything officially from Caleb Williams yet. But he did say, you know, if he was going to come back and play, uh, he would play in the bowl game this year. So. I've talked about it before. <clears throat> I am not a huge fan of using a roster spot on another transfer at the quarterback position. And here's my reason why. If you bring in a starting type of transfer at quarterback, you are literally running the risk of losing one or more between Miller Moss and Malachi Nelson. I think one or more, both of them would get up and leave. Because if you're bringing in a starting type of transfer, you, look, Caleb is gone. We know that. He's not coming back. Or should I say, we anticipate he's not coming back. So, so who does Lincoln Riley not feel comfortable with? Is it Miller Moss? Or is it the guy he actually recruited, five-star Malachi Nelson? Nelson wasn't in uniform when USC played UCLA. So there's that little bit of intrigue that's kind of lingering in the background. I don't know why he wasn't in uniform. I do know that he was going to redshirt in 2023 regardless. Why he wasn't suited up, I don't know. In 2023, Miller played in three games. He completed almost 72% of his passes. He had 309 yards and a touchdown. He also carried the ball twice, uh, 19 yards, and he, he scored two touchdowns using his legs. Now, I think everybody should anticipate Miller is going to start the bowl game. Uh, he's also just a redshirt sophomore. He's also already graduated, um, which means should he jump into the transfer portal, he would. He already has. He would be. He would be eligible regardless. He's now a grad transfer, so he would have, he would be able to play no matter what. Now, over the weekend, um, it's out there. It was on social media, and WeRSC.com actually confirmed it, that uh, Lincoln Riley, he took a trip to Manhattan, Kansas, for a little quickie, uh, a little quickie date with Kansas State's, uh, the Kansas State Wildcats quarterback. Uh, will Howard is his name. It was initially reported by the on three uh, Kansas State online insider Derek Young, and then I said we are C confirmed it. It was a real, like I said, real fast, according to the Kansas State on three site. Uh, Lincoln Riley was there, showed up, said hi, left. It was called a quick in and out, whatever that means. As well, um, Will Howard said he's already met with Miami and Wisconsin earlier in the week. He is a grad transfer. Those types of players are able to meet um, as of right now. I think December 4th is when the, the transfer portal officially opens for everybody. Now, in four seasons at Kansas State, uh, Howard completed 59% of his passes. He threw for 5,800 yards, 48 touchdowns. And while he serves as a part-time starter in 2022, he was QB1 in 2023. And Kansas State finished with an eight and four record. To me, it kind of feels obvious. Um, Howard wants to he wants to go play on a bigger stage. It's going to just be for one more year, and he wants that exposure before he heads to the NFL. In other words, wherever he goes, he's not going to 
And if he's coming to USC, he's not coming to compete for the job. He's coming because he knows he already has the job. And I think Miller Moss would be smart enough to know that. And if I were him, I'd say, I'm going somewhere else to do the same thing. Remember, Lincoln Riley did not actually recruit Miller at Oklahoma, while he was at Oklahoma. He did recruit Malachi Nelson. I understand the competition argument, but it kind of feels like Lincoln Riley isn't comfortable with his top two guys behind Caleb Williams. Um, it just, otherwise, I don't know, why would you go out looking for a starting level type of quarterback? Not when you've got Miller and Malachi in your bullpen. It just, something doesn't add up. Speaking of the transfer portal, uh, who's going to be playing running back in the Holiday Bowl? Rayleigh Brown, you already know, is in the portal. We know that Darwin Barlow is already in the transfer portal. And Marshawn Lloyd just announced that he's making himself ready for the NFL draft. And I, I shouldn't stop with that. Matt Colombo is also in the transfer portal. Austin Jones hasn't made an announcement. Um, we know that he's out of eligibility. We know he's going to the NFL. Is he playing in the bowl game? Because if he doesn't, <laughs> USC is left with two freshmen, Quentin Joyner and a Marion Peterson. I have to imagine Jones is going to suit up, right? Right? Or else we're moving players all over the place. Uh, Prophet Brown would be a guy I would look. I would look to put at running back. He's got that look. Just saying. So as I said, you've got three guys already in the transfer portal. Uh, number four, Marshawn Lloyd just announced he's going to the NFL. I don't think he's going to play in the bowl game. So like I said, you've got Austin Jones and two freshmen who are going to carry the load. Hopefully, you've got at least those three guys. Again, and that's assuming Jones wants to play in the bowl game. Marshawn Lloyd, you know, he was pretty good for USC in 2023 uh, in his one year. He led USC at 820 yards on the ground. He did that on only 116 carries, and he scored nine touchdowns. Now, here's the problem um, for US, with USC's running game, and this is self-inflicted, if you ask me. USC's running backs weren't used enough. Marshawn Lloyd, his high, he carried 17 times against Cal this year. Uh, he, he carried it 10 times or less in seven games. Uh, you know, if anyone's wondering why Lincoln Riley and Coach Kyle McDonald are, are having difficulty getting commitments from those elite running backs, I don't think you have to look any further than Lloyd's rushing attempts. I mean, <laughs> I, I know ball security seemed like it might have played a small role in, in the issue in how many times he carried the ball. But when 17 carries is the high watermark and less than 10 times in seven games out of 12, especially when you look at USC's first six games of the season, who they played, you're not doing a really good job of selling your running game to the rest of the to the rest of the country, nor to the best of your ability. All right, uh, real quick update on the transfer portal, just to keep because everybody's keeping score on who's who's going in, who's not. Chris Thompson Jr., another linebacker, uh, he entered his name into the portal. Six foot two, two hundred thirty pounds. He came to USC um, in twenty twenty one from Auburn in the transfer portal. He's now going to be, I think he's a grad transfer. So he should probably be eligible wherever he ends up going. Now, if you're trying to update, you can score. That makes, on defense, Jamar Sakona, Zamarian Gordon, and Chris Thompson Jr. On offense, Rayleigh Brown, Darwin Barlow, Matt Colombo, Jude Wolf. There you go. Uh, that list is probably going to keep growing between now and the bowl game. And I will keep you updated as we go along. We are at the end of this episode. First one of the week, Monday. Thank you. Uh, while you're watching this, if it is your first thing you're doing every day, it should be. I'm on Zoom right now with Lincoln Wright. So I will have an update from that Zoom call on our next episode of Locked on USC. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.